you one and all present here on the bio on the behalf of leadership lecture series i invite you to today's talk where we have dr badri seshadri sir with us badri sir obtained his btech in mechanical engineering from iit madras in 1991 and phd in mechanical engineering from cornell university in 1996 in 1996 he co-founded crickinfo a website dedicated to the cricket information the crickinfo was sold to the wisden group in 2003 and to the espn in 2007 and it's been serving a lot of cricket million, millions of cricket fans all over the world badri left the cricket for to start a book publishing company in chennai called new horizon media nhm where he he is currently its managing director nhm publishes books primarily in tamil recently it has forayed into cloud computing space as well dr badri sir writes on technology science education politics and current affairs in tamil and english for newspapers and magazines He has written a few books in Tamil for school children. He regularly appears in TV programs in Tamil channels such as Vijay TV, Tanti TV. He also anchored a 17-week Walk the Talk program in Tanti TV. Now I take the pleasure to invite Badri sir to inspire us with a few words. good evening um uh, gives me immense pleasure to be here talking to you and more than the current uh, uh presentation that i have uh, i spent a fairly good uh, interactive session with uh, students here uh, the students from the humanities uh, side where they had lots of questions about uh, publishing space i'm not going to talk about uh, publishing but about cricket for um i'm not going to go into details of uh, what all we did in cricket for but some uh, essence extracted from that because i want that as a sort of uh, starting point to get into some uh, you know serious theorizing and uh, want you to start thinking in a certain direction this is it this single page is a complete history of cricket info we started in uh, 1993 uh, as a sort of volunteer effort uh, because we are desperately uh, looking for cricket information uh, in the us as graduate students we were um, spread out across the country in different universities uh, the students research scholars professors and expatriates who were living and working there in the us access to cricket information was very limited um think about see 1993 is strictly speaking pre internet era internet was available in the universities uh, primarily used for sending emails and ftp for uh, pushing files this way and that way A lot of other attempts were happening Uh, prior to 1993 i am i'm going to skip all of that in 1993 the first platform that crickinfo used to even come to being was internet relay chat irc many of you may not even recognize that uh, it's the um, uh, it's what twitter is today in some sense right um 1993 our aim was only to inform each of us what actually happened in a match um, not necessarily the same day but maybe you know uh, within a week we just wanted to know the results of the game very humble uh, very low level uh, requirement basically um, so that basically meant that at the end of the match somehow somebody gets hold of a score card and then types it up and then sends it to where I mean, it has to be put up in some location, a database, which can store this information. Um, so IRC was the first place, not to store. I mean, it it was stored in a computer, but IRC is a a channel where when somebody comes and asks for a score, the uh, automated programs called bots will read the score and give out the score. technicalities are actually irrelevant because what actually happened subsequently is very different between 93 to 96 we did uh, 
some amazing things lot of technological changes happened in 1994 uh, something called gopher came up many of you may not have even heard about that it's a uh, a simple um, uh, you know directory structure like a typical ftp uh, kind of a structure let's say where files can be stored and you can retrieve the file from there it moved to the world wide web which was there well before but there wasn't a good interface to consume the content except for uh, a, a text browser called lynx uh, the ncsa mosaic browser in 1995 that um, uh, came up made a significant change and then subsequently the netscape browser and so on right by 1996 the browsers were there some kind of rudimentary internet connection was there in the us in all the colleges, all the universities, and also to a lot of homes who could afford it through uh, an internet protocol called SLIP, S-L-I-P. Subsequently, it became PPP. This kind of internet connectivity for few dollars, maybe $50 per month kind of connectivity, started connecting a lot of computers, and it started also connecting the community that we are talking about. We used that in 1996 to cover the World Cup. That happened in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, um, which was a major effort. I'm not going to go into what all we did to uh, provide the scores, but for the first time in 1996, we could provide almost every single match covered ball by ball with a live scorecard and a rudimentary commentary per ball. To this day, what you are seeing in Crick Info, the format, there's a lot of jazz added, a lot of clean interface added. The same thing, exactly the same thing in some kind of a dirty format in the earliest HTML possible. We had done it in 1996 covering a major tournament, ball by ball. Okay. That sort of gave us the confidence and we broke all kinds of internet records at that time. We were uh, ranked number one site at the time in 1996 by uh, web ranking companies um, and we keep saying this better than even the porn sites of that time uh, and it's really true um, but of course we couldn't really uh, keep that position because once the world cup was over pawn took over okay so 1996 world cup coverage basically gave us the strength to start really looking at this as actually a company, a venture, which we could uh, sustain. We thought we could sustain. And 96, we registered a company, uh, two of us. I had just finished my uh, thesis defense. And uh, uh, the main founder, Dr. Simon King, he was a postdoc at the time in uh, US. Uh, he was doing postdoc in University of Minnesota. He had just the previous year, 95 and uh, middle of 95, he went back to UK, found a job in London. 96 beginning, 96 middle of 96, uh, towards the end of 96, I came back to India and we set about seriously building this into a company. For the next three years, we tried all kinds of ideas to stabilize the company, bring funding and the methods that we did, um, which I talk about, I'll talk about next, a uh, little later didn't really work out until about 1998 when we started getting small bits of financing. The company was fairly stable. 1999, there was another World Cup. The story of Crick Info in some sense is World Cup to World Cup. Significant changes happened there. In fact, I, I've written a detailed blog in my English blog somewhere about what happened uh, from World Cup to World Cup and how, so from 96 World Cup to 99 World Cup, 99 basically told us that we should not depend on the cricket boards. Between 96 and 99, we tried convincing the cricket boards to partner with us, or rather, us to partner them. And none of the cricket boards really agreed to even listen to our side of the story. We were making this grand idea, pitch, that, look, you know, internet rights are going to be extremely important, not just the just text ball by ball and the scorecards, etc. But access to players, because cricket boards controlled access to players 
access to venues photographs audio video all of them put together can be enormously valuable in terms in, in sheer dollar terms it can be billions of dollars and we told see most of the cricket boards were impoverished indian cricket board was just about coming up we are talking about 1990s indian cricket board was not as rich as it is today right australia and england still controlled cricket Jagmohan Dalmia had just started turning Indian cricket board around into a fairly powerful body. All the other cricket boards were totally impoverished, hopeless, you know, just about making do with whatever revenues that they were making. And we told them, here is this great product which we are building. Our only interest is to cover cricket in the best manner possible because we are cricket fans first. We are not entrepreneurs, we are not businessmen, we have no idea about building businesses. but we have a great idea about building a wonderful cricket product online no cricket board listened to us we made presentations in england in australia in india in dubai wherever cricket boards came together we will wangle about 10 15 minutes go and make a presentation and we were completely ignored the final meeting was in 1998 where uh, dalmia had ascended to the presidency of icc and uh, he doesn't really understand business much in my opinion so he completely uh, dismissed it as a uh, uh, you know, fancy notion and he just asked us to buzz off so then we decided okay this is not going to help we want a product we want something that will help us so let's go and build something on our own go raise funding and manage and then world cup was coming and it was a last world cup a particular cricket board was managing before it was going to become a pure icc property okay if you don't understand any of this just ignore uh, it will not spoil the story anyway okay so that was the last cricket world cup that an england cricket board or, or any cricket board controlled subsequent world cups were controlled by icc directly so england cricket board was trying to build a great website uh, without really understanding the web technologies um but one of the first things they wanted to do was to deny us access to cricket grounds but that was okay i mean we were anyway looking at uh, you know uh, tv broadcast and uh, coming up with scoring but we actually wanted access to uh, venues so we could come up with wonderful match reports after a lot of haggling they allowed us um, that even proved that cricket info had great fan following and official status did not matter at all the great website with huge funding from various sponsors produced by uh, england cricket board got nothing compared to the kind of access that we got in 1999 and then our uh, uh, sort of diverse with all the cricket boards was made final we then raised money from uh, some private investors 99 it was a great time to raise money and we were actually conservative we should have raised lot more monies beginning of 2000 uh, 99 end itself we had started negotiating with a lot of major players around the world and we were given a valuation at the end of 99 beginning of 2000 of 150 million us dollars and our revenues uh, over the entire year couldn't even come anywhere close to a million dollars much lower than that and we were being valued 150 million dollars we raised money um, from sifi in india um, we should have gone out to raise more money which we didn't net result was that this this funding happened in 2000 but by 2001 the whole world at least the internet world the dot com world completely went down and we were stuck we were completely squeezed we had no revenues worth talking about we had built expenses we were we were burning nearly a million dollars a month okay and we had built offices all over the world in uk in australia in new zealand south africa zimbabwe india bangladesh pakistan sri lanka and couple of freelancers sitting in west indies or different islands there right and we were covering all kinds of cricket games from 
టెస్ట్ క్రికెట్ టు వన్ డే క్రికెట్ టు ఫస్ట్ క్లాస్ క్రికెట్ రైట్ ఇన్ ది ఇన్ ఇన్ నైంటీ సెవెన్ నైంటీ ఎయిట్ నైంటీ నైన్ పీరియడ్ వీ హ్యాడ్ స్కోరర్ సెంట్ ఆల్ ఓవర్ ఇండియా వేర్ దర్ ఇస్ నో ఇంటర్నెట్ కనెక్టివిటీ అవర్ స్కోరర్స్ వర్ సిట్టింగ్ దేర్ ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ ఈచ్ డే ఇన్ దీస్ అండర్ థర్టీన్ అండర్ సిక్స్టీన్ అండర్ నైన్టీన్ అండ్ రంజీ ట్రాఫీ మ్యాచెస్ అండ్ దులీప్ ట్రాఫీ యూ నేమ్ ఇట్ యూనో ఎవ్రీ సింగిల్ మ్యాచ్ అట్ ది ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ ఈచ్ డే దే విల్ హ్యాండ్ రైట్ ద స్కోర్స్ ఇన్ పేపర్ ఫైండ్ ద నియరెస్ట్ ఫ్యాక్స్ మెషీన్ ఫ్యాక్స్ ఇట్ వీ హ్యాడ్ అర్ ఆఫీస్ ఇన్ ఇన్ ఫోర్త్ స్ట్రీట్ గోపాలపురం వేర్ వీ హ్యాడ్ బంచ్ ఆఫ్ పీపుల్ హూ విల్ కమ్ టు వర్క్ ఇన్ ది ఈవినింగ్ సో ఆఫ్టర్ సిక్స్ ఓ క్లాక్ దీస్ ఫ్యాక్సెస్ విల్ స్టార్ట్ ఎమర్జింగ్ నాట్ టు అవర్ ఆఫీస్ బికాస్ వీ డింట్ హ్యావ్ అ ఫ్యాక్స్ మెషీన్ టు యూర్ నియర్ బై ఫ్యాక్స్ సెంటర్ వేర్ ఎట్ చాపుల్ పిక్ అప్ ద ఫ్యాక్స్ షీట్స్ కమ్ అండ్ దెన్ టైప్ ఇట్ అండ్ బై సెవెన్ థర్టీ టు ఎయిట్ ఓ క్లాక్ యూ విల్ హ్యావ్ ద డే స్కోర్ కార్డ్స్ that's the kind of network we subsequently built in bangladesh pakistan and we were burning money doing all that okay so 2000 all this is all going on 2001 we are running out of money we ran out of money there was no way we could raise more money we were stuck then we went back to sifi asked them to invest more they were not willing to invest more but they agreed to give us loan we took loans but you know how do you turn a company around which is which is eating a million dollars a month and is generating 100000 dollars in revenues it took a long time we sacked a lot of people it looked like the market will simply not change for the better so by 2002 we restructured the company substantially moved a lot of operations to india there's a lot of you know problem between the founders uh, simon king was edged out uh, i on behalf of sifi took more control of the company there were others who cooperated a lot of heartache problems uh, things that most of the startups go through but we maintained the product right through all through this period from 1993 to 2007 and beyond to this day the product has only improved right 2002 we started talking about uh, an exit of some kind the exit was not meant for us because we had borrowed a lot of money and we had to pay that back but it was more about the product crickinfo was sort of languishing i mean in the sense that it was producing great stuff but we knew that we could not sustain that we needed more servers we needed more bandwidth which used to be fairly expensive in those days right we were getting more and more users you know we were adding millions of users every year and we had to serve them and that needed more investment and that was not going to come from equity in any way nobody was willing to invest in this company which had no road map for revenues and profitability etc 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 so 2002 in the meantime wisdom uh, which at the time was owned by an oil billionaire called uh, sir john paul getty who um, whose grandfather sold his uh, getty oil business to uh, standard oil in in us and made a lot of money which was all in stocks and uh, so this guy was a billionaire who uh, i mean that's a story that i don't want to go into i have recounted it in other places net net he was ready to fund anything to do with cricket he fell in love with cricket he is an american but who fell in love with cricket because cricket saved him it's a great story he was a drug addict and uh, he was wanted for murder of his girlfriend who committed suicide and uh, he was uh, uh, to be extradited to i mean he was all these things happened in italy and uh, he ran away to the only country which didn't have extradition treaty at that time with uh, italy and that was britain where uh, he was hospitalized for de addiction and the fellow in the next bed for something else was uh, freddy truman and that their cricket started so uh, they used to watch cricket matches and he ended up actually buying a castle buying a you know building a cricket stadium where uh, they organized matches but net net he he funded wisden cricket monthly he bought wisden almanac he funded uh, a venture called wisden.com at that time which was losing a lot of money they had money that they could lose and we had a great product that needed money so the marriage happened uh, right there 
by the end of 2002 we decided to merge the companies 2003 world cup when it happened we had completely signed the deal so 99 world cup showed us that we could be a stand alone company by 2003 we could still be a company but not a stand alone company so 2003 um, we were uh, so all of us individuals few of us continued to work in the company building it but none of us were actually owners of the company or even part owners there were only two owners wisden and sifi then sifi exited the 2003 end uh, itself so wisden became 100% owner of the company but uh, unfortunately john paul getty died without writing a will leaving all his properties in trust at few sons daughters um, so finally they parceled various pieces of property put it on block sold it sold some of them and by 2007 espn bought the company by then it had it was well funded it was a great product so a lot of money actually went to people who were who had nothing to do with actually building the company but that's fine this is the story from 2007 to now it's part of um, the larger disney group under its espn brand of sports properties okay the team that was involved in uh, building crick info most of them still continue to work there only that i decided in 2004 to leave and start a publishing venture this is a brief story of crick info just to give you an idea google had not even started when we had started crick info and had built great things um iPod was still way down the line and Apple was floundering the time that I'm talking about you know just to give you a sense of what things are but what did we actually accomplish we were the first ones to even boldly envisage that it was possible to build a complete database of any sports site the only venture of similar kind i would say which can never be complete um, or maybe is internet movie database right which was sort of uh, you know around similar time trying to put together uh, a complete database of every movie uh, at least in english or hollywood movie but now they are they are obviously constantly expanding right we developed the standards for how any live sporting event should be presented online you know soccer had not reached this kind of live coverage levels it's also difficult you know the uh, discrete nature of the game of cricket allows you to actually write a description of every ball whereas uh, it's very difficult to keep typing really fast about balls being passed from one person to another the positions all that is extremely difficult if you think about it right and you know like you know cricket and baseball the only two events which is like fairly long sporadic events with lot of time intervals in between lot of statistics you can pack all of them in into a very nice description other sports are also doing this today right but none of them can come anywhere close to these two uh, we developed this ball by ball text commentaries live updating of scorecards through auto refresh so you just have to just open the window do nothing just stare at the screen and things will keep happening a lot of statistics that we have added over that period of time have now become standard products in television coverage if you actually think about it those of you who have watched cricket matches from you know uh, from the prior to cricket info and now you will know what i'm talking about okay and the most important thing is that we could promise and deliver live coverage of every single international match today many can do that but we even uh, you know we were the first ones to even think of this kind of a promise and no other sporting uh, you know product of comparable uh, nature even exists some of them are very restricted i mean major league baseball uh, is fairly restricted to one country but even there they don't go down to the level of coverage that we do in cricket uh, and cricket for continues to do today and the the attempt to put together complete accurate and dependable archival data these words are very key we didn't start this way we wanted to go there but we didn't start this way our first aim was 
to put together an archive inaccurate data was perfectly okay we felt that inaccurate data is better than no data and once we got fairly shabby looking scorecards we kept improving upon them today if you want the most accurate cricket statistics the only place to go is cricket info not any other place so that is a level i mean that if 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 something is not there in cricket info you can say it probably didn't happen at all okay that kind of brand that we could build you know ambitious plan of getting every player and every cricket ground of a of a certain level completely documented the most interesting thing is that unwittingly uh, without really thinking about this and without wanting to do this in 1997 a rare uh, uh, you know chance uh, came to us to actually stream live stream broadcast cricket tournament okay even have the uh, uh, the screen image of you know this this is how bad uh, the cricket info interface used to be in those days right so along with mick jagger uh, of rolling stones we started broadcasting uh, live streaming of certain tournaments that immediately gave us an idea of actually putting together a grand plan of covering every single cricket match video broadcast of it even the ranji trophy matches and even minor irrelevant matches we even thought about you know uh, completely robotically controlled cameras with uh, fixed cameras and automatic coverage because you can't really afford to you know equipment is cheap people are more expensive so we we came up with a lot of ideas which we never implemented because we couldn't raise the kind of money that we needed now to this day these things are not happening okay um, we never figured out a mechanism of actually converting this into money but today this is de facto in most of the countries where television broadcast does not make sense it's now live streaming broadcast of uh, matches particularly in the us for example and most of the other countries you know uh, internet rights are now common and all matches are streamed live and you can pay a package a subscription package and follow that but 1997 no other sport had even tried this and we were few years away from doing all of that i want you to look at few other Uh, sporting products and what happened to them and what happened to cricket info in 1994 a multi product uh, multi sport uh, uh, sporting product came up in the us called uh, sports line which was renamed later as cbs sports line when cbs is a, a network of television channels owned by this massive um, uh, media conglomerate called viacom so they later on took a stake and finally completely bought the entire entity out but what is more important is that a person could start it in 1994 go public in 1997 to raise a lot of money without actually showing any profits right and eventually sold it off for some money i mean he made he still made some money right today that name is not there you look around for sports line you know unless somebody like me tell you the story i mean we spent a lot of time with these guys they wanted to buy us out to produce a, a very large sporting international sporting content site they started uh, a site called sports.com in uk for their european operations finally uh, closed down all of that and now you know they have just shrunk us just a small bit of arm of uh, cbs but they were pioneers they did lot of things that we wanted to do they had the money to do that we didn't have the money for example they acquired internet rights to produce audio commentary of lot of matches major league baseball basketball they had fantastic you know radio studio kind of a thing the entire content was going out only on the internet right and later on when they did a deal with cbs some of the cbs associated radio stations started broadcasting these commentaries these were ideas that we you know we took from them and we wanted to produce specific audio commentaries you know um, customized audio commentaries for the internet audience because if you really look at following all india radio commentaries they are just not up to the mark you know we wanted to do that we could never make it happen to this day we are unable to you know cricket info is unable to do some of these things 
for a brief while after visden acquired cricket info we tried uh, you know sort of ambushing the rights holders so just follow the uh, television and produce audio commentary that's illegal okay but we just wanted to test it now visden were testing it earlier uh, rights holders protested heavily filed cases and once it was a sort of you know clean espn kind of a venture they didn't want to get into that we wanted to build video score cards which if you are if you are following the current india sri lanka series on cricket info uh, you would have seen that how many of you have followed that so any wicket you just click on that and you can see the video of the uh, wicket uh, or key moments etc so we built a score card called video score card which we wanted to uh, present during 2003 world cup and we couldn't get the rights subsequent world cups we kept trying and the major rights holders were simply not willing to sell the rights right this is the most important thing that a cricket fan wants today if you can't watch the entire match what is the next best thing that you want you want to follow the score you want to follow ball by ball but if a particular important event happens in a particular ball you want to watch that video the combined effectively important video of a one day match will not even amount to 7 and 1/2 minutes i'm not talking about the replay minutes etc just take only those balls that uh, you know something actually happened such as wickets and few boundaries maybe a century you know that's all so few minutes worth of video will enhance your cricket experience enormously but today you have to struggle to make this happen while what people want is one thing what the rights holders want is something entirely different the broadcast right holder rights holders don't want to give away everything but that is changing you know slowly it is changing but if we had succeeded in raising a lot of money we would have made all these things happen you know at least a decade back anyway we couldn't do that so sportsline tells you the story of how a brand can completely be finished off even after they had tried uh, and raised hundreds of millions of dollars at least a couple of 100 300 million dollars they raised we did nothing the other story is almost similar you know 1995 soccer net started we were constantly comparing ourselves with soccer net because this was a uk based company and in uk soccer is a much bigger game than cricket and these guys also uh, eventually ended up with espn but today it's 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 completely defaced the original structure is not there the name itself is not there it just vanished today you can't even find espn soccer net but you can find espn cricket info but that was because we could build a fairly powerful brand with fairly complete outline of what people wanted now i was discussing earlier today that the scoring program that we built through which the score cards are generated the the one that the scorers use what we had developed in 1996 continued almost till last year without any change only last year they changed and built rebuilt notice that between 96 to 2014 the kind of technology changes that have happened but even then what we built in 1996 was so powerful there was no need to actually change it but now uh, a different product is being used to score these uh, uh, matches the structure of how the cricket should be presented you know you go back and if you know you can go and uh, look at um, uh, the uh, archive if you go to internet.org and previous uh, years you can go all the way up to 1995 6 7 8 4 cricket for you see the same structure i mean much better presented now no doubt the single major thing that happened after we started getting money and merger with wisdom was the improvement in the quality of journalism the quality of write up that was the one major drawback that we had we were we were not journalists we were all just a bunch of plain enthusiasts and you know uh, techies nerds and journalism is a totally different kind of a thing and today i would say that cricket info with the best of both um, 
journalism and uh, other forms of content this is the best place to go to to even read uh, most evocative pieces on any aspect of cricket if somebody retires the best article you will find not just one many in cricket info compared to any other newspaper so what was the problem that um, we had uh, the timing was all wrong i mean these are all post mortem analysis i mean you you can't uh, decide these things the 1993 96 period when we were we had this great idea we didn't have the tools to produce um, a great wonderful um, database of products so we had to go through lot of difficulties if we had started let's say you know end of 1990s not us if this whole product had started in late 1990s it would have been a very different product we could have capitalized a lot better etc another uh, uh, major problem that i now see uh, is that um, at the time that we started cricket for there were you know the people who were involved in it were all predominantly indian graduate students and few you know one or two brits and an odd australian and many people you know when when we wanted people to join us nobody was actually willing to do that either they were continuing their studies or they wanted a different career academic career fortunately i completely threw it away right but if you look at great companies you know once the idea is there the founders simply don't care about their education right? what is a big deal of you know getting a, a degree from cornell or stanford or whatever it is it's simply not uh, uh, you know worth it i mean you can be you can just leave half way through and then build a far better product and that is worth you know uh, orders of magnitude more than you getting a degree because we in india we we assign so much importance to education than actually building things creating things right um we were not ready for that at least even i was not ready for that i wanted to finish my thesis defense as if like it matters it does not matter you know i have written a thesis it is there i i think somebody is using it i am not using it so what what value was it really adding to the body of mechanical engineering you know surely somebody else would have done that but that's not the same with something like cricket info right uh, millions of people who have derived enjoyment from this uh, is worth a lot more because the academic research will happen anyway and uh, sorry for saying this in an in a technical institution uh but this is what i strongly believe the place and the sport was completely wrong for us right if if for some reason we were building a product like this on baseball in us we would have been funded like crazy but cricket nobody understood this and the vcs in other countries i mean india didn't really have a, a concept like that uk they were still you know, very uh, old fashioned um, so you know even the place i mean if if probably you know if i had studied in uh, uh, stanford instead of cornell things would have been uh, things might have been very different might have been right so this is a problem i mean it's a problem today for many of us we are coming up with great ideas and we don't have the ecosystem to really support this we don't have people who really believe in our ideas to fund these ideas right uh, it's changing slowly but we have a long way to go but despite all this we still sustained a great product primarily because we were the consumers for the product that we were building we wanted a far better product there is a problem that i see with a lot of startup companies today in that they see an opportunity so they go and build it but they are themselves not the consumers of that product you can never build a great product like that you can go and analyze founders and only when they are really passionate about that product you take netflix 
the guy who started that really you know loves movies i mean there are others also but they didn't really do it and amazon cannot build a great movie product in my opinion but they have built a fantastic book product called kindle i'm not talking about the general uh, book uh, industry where they sell books because jeff bezos is primarily a reader and steve jobs couldn't build a good book reader i mean their their books business is no apple books is just hopeless really because but he built a fantastic music product because he is primarily a music guy which jeff bezos is not so you have to be the consumer of what you are building to really come up with the best in the class because you know what you actually want and you want to keep fixing that because you are not satisfied with whatever it is that you are you are consuming and that will drive you your uh, building decisions and where you are going to spend the money etc okay so i want to talk about just you know i'm finishing up just as you can see it's just 45 so uh, just two more slides and i will be done you know uh, these are all you know i'm i'm just analyzing uh, for the last 10 years uh, now i'm at a fair distance from quick info you know i have uh, uh, i'm i'm just a consumer and i'm not any way involved with the product what might i have done differently okay we if 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 i continue to uh, if i if, if i had generated lot of money for the company and i was building it i would have certainly spent hell of a lot of money on acquiring internet rights and build a very powerful video product now the situation is that you are still 5 to 6 years away from such a product because no effort has gone into that right i still don't like the score cards that i am seeing you know i want a very different type of score card i have i have been talking to them but engineering that is very difficult if you are not a user yourself you get design companies to come and they just clean up the existing design but that's just crap i mean we are not looking for great designs we are looking for great functionalities so finally at some point in time the cricket info guys asked you know can you get involved in it and i just didn't have the time to do that so now i i am i can only say i know i am not satisfied with the product but i don't have the time to completely redesign the product the medium through which i am consuming it is changing the tablets the phones and they require very different way of presenting scores and commentary and statistics and the tools are there the technology is there and we are not doing enough quick info is not doing enough others are not doing enough okay they are happening you know i'm i'm seeing it i'm but it's too slow too slow and this is primarily because it's not a startup i mean it's it's now 25 year old i mean 20 year plus year old company and that can never really build a great product sadly um this is another key issue that i have been talking to various people today we didn't individually make much money and that's you know you may ask you know what's so big deal i mean whether you make uh, you know 1 rupee or million rupee or million dollars what is it to me i'm saying it is a lot to you uh, great entrepreneurs will have to make money because then they will go and build more fantastic products again you look around the history of various great entrepreneurs and i can give you one great example this uh, chap called elon musk um who started with a fairly you know trivial product he's a south african and very interesting history read about his uh, life there's a biography a fairly good biography you can look around he uh, right from early on he decided that you know his life is going to be in us um pretty much like many of us in india educate back right went there studied in a college and somewhere in pennsylvania i think then went to silicon valley uh basically bootstrapped himself built a uh, company uh, delivering a solution on 
you know sort of think of google maps and finder uh, finding nearby restaurants you know that kind of a thing there are dime a dozen products now but he was one of the early guys but it didn't go anywhere they got venture funding but the whole venture just collapsed and despite that somebody like compaq i think bought out the entire company and uh, uh, before that he was chucked out they brought some other uh, uh, manager in but nevertheless he did make money and what did he do he went and put all the money to build an internet bank then somebody else was also doing the same thing uh, and the two companies merged and they eventually became paypal and he was edged out see you know very well how paypal has dramatically changed the way uh, money is transferred in the world right again even in this company he was edged out uh he struggled and uh, finally however he still had his some minority stake or you know, reasonable stake when ebay bought paypal he made 100 plus million dollars so what did he do he went and started uh, this company called spacex how many of you are following spacex it's an amazing company right that a guy can start up a venture that can compete with countries in sending rockets up there and uh, uh, you know uh, put out satellites such an audacious thing to even think of and he pulled it off i was just telling somebody earlier today that uh, you know uh, i'm really proud of what isro has done but what he has done is more than what isro has ever done you know and he has more powerful rockets he has the ability to dock with international space station and he is dreaming of uh, you know colonizing mars but that's not the point the point is that you know he could actually go and build it because he had access to money which came from his previous ventures and there is no way you know you could have started something like spacex if he had not made the kind of money that he made in uh, the previous venture and not only that he completely changed he only invested in tesla cars it was started by somebody else and then he took over that company and today is changing the landscape of electric vehicles completely and is changing how elect- i mean electricity is produced through solar and consumed so that kind of uh, you know audacious um, attempt can happen only from you know bold entrepreneurs and there should be a mechanism even if they fail there should be a mechanism to sort of reward them and we don't have that kind of a structure here and i'm hoping that at some point in time something like that will happen here and that will give you very interesting products there are lots of possibilities i'm not going to go into that i mean i'm just let me just quit this um this is a point that you know i'm not going to give you advice but i'll tell you what you know i will do if if i am studying in iit you know i i will quit half a if, if i am in my third year um i'm sorry i have to say this but you know feel free to uh, uh, contest this idea i I'll, i'll just you know just quit and go and start something i can always get an education any time these ideas are very important and you cannot start them later because somebody else is going to do that right um in fact institutions like iits should allow for students to leave and take an extended leave of absence for 2 years 3 years allow you to go build something fail if you know most of you will fail M- most startups do fail right and if you fail you should be allowed to come back and continue and finish up if you want to right um uh, then you know there are interesting ways of building businesses raising money a lot of things are happening and you know you should raise a lot of money if possible and carefully structure your deals because that allows you the freedom to go and make mistakes and only if you make mistakes will you even build interesting ventures okay there is no way you can build a fantastic venture in a safe manner you have to make mistakes and i'll start very young which goes along with uh, you know i i i hear a lot of people talk about you know can i uh, 
finish up my degree maybe do a masters and work for about 5 years you are wasting your time i'm telling you you cannot start anything great but by which i am not saying that you know if you are old you cannot start up i i i am involved in you know, i am starting up even now that's different you know you 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 can do that but with every passing year you get dull i am duller now than i was a decade back and i am now you know compared to what i was in uh, 1993 4 5 i'm nowhere near that form there's no way you can do that you know you you just become hopeless with every passing year so start early and uh, go and build something really bold don't really worry about selling it you know one of the questions that somebody asked in my previous interaction with students is that i'm really afraid of losing control i mean why should you be just just build a great idea sell it off if you can make money and go and build another thing so that's if you can call it an advice that's what i will tell you and start very young thank you uh, thank you sir that was really productive and inspiring we open the podium for questions if you have any questions you can ask i just wanted to ask you in a just kind of coinage that you have made it to, uh, for this uh, website of yours or from matter url uh, was it a tamilish quick quick info or quick info no no this is see we uh, we never really thought much about it it was a you know cricket information database so you just take uh, you know half of that and half of this and make up something I mean, we were not really bothered too much about uh, uh, you know thinking about all those things really i mean this was the name was coined by simon king so there's you know you can call it a british thing maybe but not a tamil thing anyway anyway so that was just in a lighter way i ask and we heard that at those times that uh, quick info was bought over for a huge price and stuff like that Whereas now in one of the slides which you had told that I didn't make that kind of a money, that's a shock to me. As of any input. No, both are right. I didn't make much money, and none of the founders made uh, anything worth talking about. But uh, we have had valuations, fancy valuations, and a lot of other people made money. That's that's basically to do with structuring. You know, my guess is um, uh, Wisden spent around. Uh, I know Wisden spent around uh, about five million pounds and little bit more. subsequently to sustain it and then eventually sold it for about 50 million us dollars at the least so they made a lot of money and uh, one of the investors exited in 2000 uh, after investing small monies made uh, three four fold in a matter of one year so others did make money and the valuations were very high and fancy but they also fell down to nothing so so somebody at the back pass this hello uh my question is like can you just get a lit in the founders then and what were the one or two reasons major deviations why you know there was difference of opinion they had to move out or what um the difference of opinion always starts when you are running out of money and you don't know what to do right there is always going to be i mean if if you have enough money then you can always reconcile your differences so we had we were we completely ran out of money we depended on our major investor to lend us money that was the only way i mean we had to borrow money and then we had to listen to them and you have to cut costs so there was only one way i mean you had to listen to them and that will invariably result in difference of opinion fights but almost you know every venture that was sort of in that kind of a scenario has had the same problem with founders because founders are fairly you know difficult people with very uh, clear ideas about uh, you know what works and what uh, uh, what is right what is best and extremely opinionated strong willed so 
a fight is inevitable if everything goes fine then there is no problem you can sort of adjust and manage not when things are going wrong what were the sources of revenue for click info back then and in the first 2 to 3 years of the company were you focused on making money or just building the product even though you were having losses all the time um the revenues then and now remain the same advertising primarily advertising and sponsorship so it's not just a uh, web based uh, uh, you know banner advertising alone but properties which are uh, you know branded in a particular manner you know and then uh, transactional revenues through supply of scores through other uh, media outlets mobile phones and so on um you know these networks had to become fairly large and a lot of people had to really spend money on it for cricket for to generate sufficient revenues in the beginning we were forced to generate revenues because there was no other source i mean there was no investment for the first 3 years i mean 96 to 99 we were entirely focused on making some monies and building the product within that but once the investment came in we completely forgot about raising the monies i mean uh, raising our revenues we just let it go uh, languish and ended up building huge expenses so that's a mistake and today i will balance it much better and i will still go and spend more than what i am making but i won't do it like the kind of you know 10 times uh, you know we were spending about a million plus and making about 100000 so that's a bad model Good evening, sir. The, my question is, if you have a very good idea, is it uh, versus if you have two, three ideas and you can run off with all those three ideas, which you would prefer? Uh, two, three ideas which are one idea. Yeah, against only one idea. idea. Only, only one, one idea. idea will work at a time. Two, three ideas will simply, you know, uh, you will fritter away your time and you won't build any of, uh, you know, you will lose in all of them. One idea. you should have only one idea and focus only on that idea uh, sir are you still interested in uh, mechanical engineering research i am interested in some aspects of it not mechanical engineering per se i am interested a lot in solar solar power and solar powered vehicles um, uh, i don't know whether you call it mechanical engineering or electrical engineering or material science but i'm i'm fairly interested in that uh, i'm interested in generally you know uh, materials of various kind and how they are you know uh, created and i think Uh, the future uh, uh, needs a lot of research in that area and i'm interested in knowing what is happening i'm too old to get into any kind of useful research anyway and i'm totally away from that but i am i i may get into some solar driven startup or you know if i have an opportunity to invest or work with that's an area of great interest to me i uh, i have an electric bike um, uh, i'm interested in the electric vehicle project that is happening here funded by or incubated in uh, it madras that's an area of great interest to me uh, thank you sir we are very grateful to have you here now i invite dina india professor nagarajan sir to give away the talk of token of appreciation to sir